Hey, I'm Jordan. I'm Sam. And I'm Jacob. And today, we're going to be teaching you about mollusks. Mollusks. Oh, hey there. Today, I'm going to be teaching you guys about mollusks. Mollusks are soft-bodied sea limites that have the three-part body plan. Mollusks also have bilateral symmetry, and most mollusks have a shell. Come in. Oh, hey class. Have a seat. You ready to learn about mollusks? Yes. First, I'll enlighten you with one of the most basic facts. The mollusk is made up of a three-part body plan. What is? What are those three parts to the body plan? That's a very good question. You can have a cookie afterwards. But the three parts to the body plan are the visceral mass, the mantle, and the foot. Thank you! What do those parts do? Oh, good question. The visceral mass is the central section of the mollusk. It contains all of its organs. The mantle is the heavy fold of tissue that forms the outer layer of the body. Finally, every single mollusk that you'll ever see has a muscular region called the foot. It is used for movement. What do mollusks eat? Good question, Jordan. I'm really glad you asked. Some mollusks are filter feeders. They don't move around much. Some are herbivores, and some are active predators! So, class, um, do you have to get comfortable? Sure. No problem. No. How do mollusks eat? Very good question. All mollusks... Except bivalves. Thanks. Well, anyways... All mollusks... Except bivalves! All mollusks, except bivalves... Have a long, tongue-like organ called a radula. Radula is a tongue-like organ, again, that is covered with thousands of sharp, curved teeth, and mollusks use it for feeding. Cool. Bye, Bells. Well, taking into account that you guys are all 14-year-old boys, I'm going to talk to you about mollusk reproduction. Most mollusks are either A, male, or B, female, but some snails and slugs are hermaphrodites. Hermaphrodite means you can switch sex whenever you want. See? And the other ones are homosexual. Ha ha ha! Oh, just kidding. <laughs> Anyways, oh yeah, seriously, write that hermaphrodite one down. You're gonna need that. Write down in your notes right now. Yes. Well, how do they... Hey! The fertilized eggs of mollusks develop into larvae called trochophores. Mollusks are an extremely diverse group of animals. There are three major classes, gastropods, cephalopods, and bivalves. They all share the same basic organ systems and tissue layers, but they have different feeding strategies and body plans. Yes, they may have the same organs, but some of them have, are better adapted for certain tasks. For instance, one may be more angular, while the other may have longer tentacles. These gastropods have a pair of tentacles in their head that have eyes located at the tips. Some gastropods, terrestrial species, secrete mucus from the base of their foot which forms a slimy path that they can glide along. Gastropods also eat algae and some leaves. Yes! Yes! Gastropods, like snails and slugs, are primarily a marine group that also has members in their freshwater and terrestrial habits. Most gastropods have a pair of tentacles in their head that have eyes located at the tips. Terrestrial species secrete mucus from the base of their foot, which forms a slimy path that they can glide along. Gastropods also eat algae and some leaves. Yes! 
cephalopods, like the squid, octopus, and cuttlefish, are the most intelligent of all invertebrates. Most of the cephalopod's body mass is made up of a large head attached to tentacles. Oh, <clears throat> and like many other aquatic mollusks, cephalopods draw water into their mantle cavity and expel it through a hollow tube called the siphon. This, this uh, supports means of jet propulsion. Cool. Yeah! The last group of mollusks are bivalves, like clams and oysters. They are named for their two-part hinged shells and do not have a distinct head, region, or a radula like other mollusks. Their body or f bodies are flattened between two shells that are connected by muscles. Most vi bivalves, like scallops, are marine filter feeders. They use their muscular foot to dig down in the sand and then use cilia to draw in seawater and remove nutrients. Many species of bivalves also produce pearls, which are formed by a grain of sand or other foreign objects. Animalids. The next section we'll be going over is annelids. Annelids, like worms and leeches, are easily recognized by their segments along the body. These repeating segments appear as rings and make up most of their body length, but worms also have a head region and a tail like region. These segments are separated by internal body walls called septa. Most animals also have external bristles called setae that allow them to move. Annelids have a cerebral ganglion, which essentially is a primitive version of our human brain. It's attached to a nerve core that runs throughout the body. Annelids are grouped in different classes based on the number of setae they have. Setae is another word for bristle. The class they're put into is also based on either the presence or the absence of parapodia. Oh, okay, alright. Parapodia are flap-like appendages that are used for gas exchange and locomotion. Earthworms are actually annelids that have parapodia. Parap I said that wrong. Earthworms yeah. are actually annelids that also have parapodia. Hey class, guess what this is? Ah! <laughs> That's the mark that's made when a leech bites into an animal's skin. Ah! Yep. Did you know that leeches were annelids? Didn't think so. <laughs> well, neither did I five minutes ago. Is they are special animals. Very special indeed. They lack setae and parapodium. They attach things with their jaws, and then they suck all of your blood out of your body, killing you instantly. It's terrible. 